welcome once again to our next installment of our community video update. I appreciate you spending a few minutes to learn all of the things that are happening throughout our area and of course at FHN. This video I'm very pleased to be joined by Susan Johnson who is the clinical director for our behavioral health services over at the Family Counseling Center. And Susan's going to share a lot of really good information with you. And then I'm going to share some updates about COVID-19 and what's happening in our area in general. Once again, thank you for your time, and we appreciate the ability to be able to serve you. SAD is a type of depression that usually the onset is, is triggered by the um, changes in the seasons. So most people get sad in the fall when the fall hits. And you know, the weather starts to change, it gets darker, the days are shorter, then they, they get the onset of depressive symptoms. Many of the symptoms of SAD are much like regular depressive symptoms, so changing in eating and sleeping habits, depressed mood, inability to feel pleasure about things that you normally feel pleasure about, social isolation, just a feeling of depression. That's an interesting question. Um, Many times when people are feeling depressive symptoms, their first reaction is to reach out to people that they know or love, and maybe they'll go out for um, a cup of coffee or a bite to eat or a visit. Well, COVID has kind of put a kibosh on that. And so now the, with the virus, people are more isolated than ever, and their support systems might not be available to them like they were in the past. I think pandemic fatigue is, is the constant hearing of the bad news of the, of the pandemic, the death of so many people, the illness of so many people, and people become almost immune to those things. And I would say that it probably could contribute to feelings of depression, whether it's a sad triggered depression or not. As I mentioned before, you know, reaching out to others, even though it's not very convenient right now with the pandemic, not withdrawing within yourself and keeping contact with others. Also find resources for you that might be helpful. For example, maybe it is a time that you might reach out to some counseling to help you kind of get through this tough time. I think the children, since SAD is actually a part of the depressive cluster. I do believe children are, do um, suffer from SAD. So if you're a parent, you might look for more angry or irritable or withdrawn. They might um, have sleep problems, those types of things. So it's an idea to keep an eye out for that with your children. It's important to seek help when those symptoms, those things that you're experiencing are affecting your daily life. So for example, if you're not able to go to work anymore or you um, not be able to clean your house or you're not able to care for your kids, then it's important to seek help from a professional. Well, one thing that is certain is that the future is uncertain and we really don't know. This has been a new disease, so the coronavirus or COVID-19 is something we haven't dealt with before. And in actuality, we haven't even been through a full year in our area of being exposed to this disease. So we don't know how it's reacting during the different seasons. And there's debate on whether there was a first wave, second wave. There's even discussion that this might be third wave. But what we do know is that the activity may have crested, but it never really crashed. So we've been dealing with this for some time. And one of the other things that we've learned is even throughout the area of this state, 
much less across the nation, is that we've seen a lot of erratic activity. So depending on the locality and depending on the area, we've seen numbers go up or numbers go down. So it's very hard to predict. What we do know is that we are seeing an uptick in activity right now. I think the current environment that we're dealing with right now, even though we're seeing an uptick in the number of positivity, I think some of that has to do with testing. However, we are definitely seeing an increase overall regardless of the increased numbers of testing. If one of the areas that we're much better prepared for is that we understand how to better control things as far as our responses. So really keeping our mindset on masking, on social distancing, and then also washing our hands. And in the meantime, we've learned how to test more quickly and at the same time, better treatment protocols for when people are becoming ill, how we can intervene early on to help to mitigate some of those symptoms. And even though we are seeing the uptick and that increase in testing, the predominant group that is testing positive now is a younger generation. And with that younger generation testing positive, they tend to be able to deal with the disease a little bit easier. I don't believe so. Again, we've learned a lot about this virus and we've been able to respond more proactively, but we're still in a reactive situation of where we aren't really controlling the spread and the virus number continues to tick up and we're seeing that continued growth throughout all of our areas. So to say that we have this under control would be a bit of a misnomer. The good news is, is that we've learned to deal with it much more effectively. So it is causing less harm. However, it is still something that is very serious that we all need to be aware of and doing our part to help control or limit the spread as much as possible. Some of it may have to do with um, the larger groups that are getting together. Certainly early on in the pandemic, the lockdowns were a bit tighter and nobody's advocating for that. But a lot of uh, our activity in our economy is trying to get back to business as usual, as well as a general fatigue of having to deal with wearing masks, with having limited hours, having limited contact. And then also as we see the weather starting to change, people are coming together in groups much more often and not always following the precautions that we need to, to follow. So we are seeing a lot larger spread and a lot more exposure throughout our community. Again, needs, need for us to double down and make sure we're doing all that we can to protect each other. It's a little bit too early to tell whether the seasonal flu is impacting the spread or not. What we're hopeful and what we've seen in the southern hemisphere is that the same precautions that we use for COVID-19 would be the same precautions we would use to help control the spread of the typical seasonal influenza or the flu. And so they've seen a significant decrease in the number of cases and we're hoping that that will be the same here. So washing our hands, wearing our masks, limiting our exposure and, and creating that social distance should provide a beneficial effect for helping to limit the amount of seasonal influenza that we see. But it is still critically important, more so than ever, that you do get your flu shot and make sure you keep your vaccinations up to date while adhering to all of the precautions that are out there. We have seen those increases in cases. As I'm doing this recording right now, we currently have over 20 positive COVID-19 patients at FHN Memorial Hospital, which is the highest that we've seen thus far through the pandemic. So there's definitely a lot more activity, which is creating a fair bit of stress, more so on our caregivers. Again, they're becoming fatigued for providing care day in, day out but I can't tell you enough how proud I am of each of them who are committed to caring for our community and doing to, willing to do whatever it is that's necessary to keep each other safe as well as providing excellent care to all of our patients. So as we see those increases, we've also seen a few of those patients that have been in our intensive care unit, though not as many as we were initially predicting, which is a good thing. However, we have had patients on ventilators 
and unfortunately we've even lost a few patients to COVID-19. So it's very serious for us and we want to make sure that we're doing all that we can to keep people well so that they don't have to utilize our services. But FHN is continuing to prepare to do the best that we can in dealing with this pandemic and I have great confidence in all of our caregivers. At present, I'm not currently worried. However, there are no guarantees. We've done a lot of work to become prepared. We've identified different surge type of plans or ways that we could expand our capacity. We've also been able to successfully manage the volumes that we've seen to date. And so we did stock up on additional PPE or personal protective equipment to make sure we have those supplies. And we hope that by doing your part in our community, you can help us keep those numbers down to where we won't have to worry about whether we can manage that increase in patients or not. But at present, our team is doing a fantastic job with their preparations, with the care that they're providing, that we're able to successfully manage what we're currently seeing. As I mentioned, we've been building those stockpiles since the beginning of the pandemic, and most of the supplies we're doing very well on. We still run into challenges with um, testing kits and being able to do testing in a rapid fashion. Um, one of the other shortages that we're seeing is on surgical gowns, and that's something that's happening across the nation. So we are doing well, but we never know for sure based on the activity, and we are continuing every time we have the opportunity to stockpile and to build up our inventory to prepare for come what may. I think it's really important for us to come together as families and to make sure that even though we're social distancing, as Susan was sharing with us, that doesn't mean isolating, so not that physical isolation. What we want to do is to be able to create connections as much as possible. So social distancing does not mean social isolation. It's a time for us to get creative in reaching out to friends and families to give them a word of support, whether that's a phone call, a video chat, or even just a friendly wave across the street and staying connected. I know one of the things that I was able to enjoy this weekend with my family was taking a hike at Oakdale Nature Park. So walking along the trail was really refreshing for us to connect to the outdoors. We got some good crisp air in our lungs and were able to enjoy the sunshine, which was, for my mental health, very rewarding. And I encourage people to get out, bundle up, it is getting a little bit cooler, and do it safely, but enjoy all that we have in this area. I would also to ask that we take a few minutes to be grateful for all of the things that we can do. A lot of times we'll focus on restrictions or mitigations or the things that we can't do. And that blurs the line of how many good things that we are able to still enjoy and so many other things that we can be grateful for. As we move into this time of year, it's also a great opportunity to support so many people that are in need. Now more than ever, our community needs our local support to help each other. So reaching out in whatever ways that we can to help our local businesses or to help our community members that may be in need is also a rewarding experience that gives us purpose. So I ask people to enjoy safely, continue to abide by all of the precautions that are being put out there, and we will get through this together and become stronger for it. Thank you for choosing FHN. Once again, it's a privilege to be able to care for all of your healthcare needs.